It's Friday, August 7th, 2020, and I'm here in Mansfield, Ohio. On Reformatory Road. Going to visit the Ohio State Reformatory, and I'm here already. site of the filming of the famous Shawshank Redemption movie and probably some others. It's a nice day to visit it. Arriving at 100 Reformatory Road on the right. There's a bit of a line to get in. Seems to be a fairly popular destination. Ohio State Reformatory, designed by architect Levi T. Schofield. The Ohio State Reformatory opened its doors in 1896 as a facility to rehabilitate young male offenders through hard work and education. A self-sufficient institution with its own power plant and working farm, the reformatory produced goods in its workshops for the other state institutions and provided opportunities for inmates to learn trades. As social attitudes towards crime hardened in the mid-20th century, it became a maximum security facility. The six-tier east cell block is the largest known structure of its kind. Considered substandard by the 1970s, the Ohio State Reformatory closed in 1990. It has served since as a setting for several major, major motion pictures. This Mansfield landmark was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1983. I have my audio wand, which will give me information that I can hopefully relate in the video. So the prison opened, it wasn't really complete yet, and the inmates were moved from another uh, facility in Columbus, or near Columbus, and moved by train to this facility where they were immediately put to work finishing the surrounding wall and sewer system and things like that. Levi Schofield, the architect, tried to combine Chateauesque, which, in, which is a European style characterized by very vertical faces on buildings, fairly steeply pitched roofs, gables, things like that, and a Romanesque design along with various Gothic features.
There's the uh, warden from the Shawshank Redemption. This is a uh, inmate made altarpiece. Talking about the religious accommodations and some stained glass. The land that the prison sits on and the land immediately to the north was once a Civil War Union training camp called Camp Bartley. In its lifetime of nearly a hundred years, this prison or reformatory uh, housed around 155,000 inmates and it uh, actually wasn't closed until fairly recently in the grand scheme of things. I forget which year they said, but it wasn't that long ago. Prison souvenirs. This is a desk representing the work of Civil War veteran and architect Levi Schofield.
This is the Argus Iron Claw, an alternative type of handcuff. Straight jacket, padlocks, keys. This area was used as living quarters by the assistant warden. With the closing of the Ohio State Reformatory, most of the solid brass seal of the state of Ohio doorknobs had been removed. The production crew for Shawshank Redemption created fake doorknobs like the one on the right to be placed on the doors missing the real doorknobs.
This is an actual hat worn by one of the state troopers who arrest Warden Norton in the movie. It's a uh, carafe. That was a prop in Warden Norton's office. The building was actually scheduled for demolition as soon as the movie was finished filming. This carved sign, Brooks was here, so was Red, was removed. An Ohio State Reformatory volunteer created a reproduction which is currently in the beam of the halfway house room which was filmed on the third floor of this building. Some years later, the original was returned and is on display in the case above. This is one of the several hats that Morgan Freeman's character wore in the movie. They have some nice signed photos of people like James Whitmore and Morgan Freeman and Bob Gunton and some of the other actors. <clears throat> In the movie, The Shawshank Redemption, the Brooks Library receives books and records from other states and other prisons, and this is the cover to one of the crates that they arrive in in the movie. This one from the State of Maine Department of Finance and Administration, addressed to Andy Dufresne. This is the same record player model as the one used in the movie, although it's not the same one. The microphone, however, is a prop, and it's the actual one used in the movie. tin cups and cafeteria trays used in the movie. Loudspeaker like the one there in that scene. This door was created by the movie production crew of the Shawshank Redemption. The door was created to replicate a door found in solitary of the Ohio State Reformatory. Some of the scenes in the movie were filmed using this fake solitary cell uh, because the real cells were too small, as was the hallway merging or leading into the cells. This is the warden's office. And this is a uh, reproduction of the original embroidered piece that was used in the movie. The original was purchased at a local antique shop. And there's the wall safe that Andy Dufresne has access to, keeps the warden's paperwork about his illicit activities. And 
Bible with the cutout in it. This room is just full of uh, various bits of trivia about the uh, making of the movie. Over 1,100 residents of Mansfield were used as extras, with 500 men used in an aerial scene of the prison yard. Some, one, some 300 wannabe actors came to Mansfield to try out for the 75 speaking parts, but only three of those were for women. This is probably a little more representative of <clears throat> the state of disrepair the building had come to. Plaster ceilings collapsed and this looks like the room that they used for uh, parole hearings. Red keeps going into. He's been there his whole life practically. He's institutionalized and he always says the same thing about how he's reformed and they keep keep him in the prison they don't give him parole and then finally he just sort of says you know I don't care and then they parole him. <laughs> Looks like somebody's setting this up for uh, 
some better electricity. pointless staircase there, isn't it? Obviously something's a little different here.
these are all just dignitary rooms. This room is the one that was set to decorated to look like the boarding house where Brooks stayed after he was paroled and where he hung himself. These are mostly all just um, offices and rooms where administrative people would have been quartered when the prison was active.
This uh, narrow and steep stairwell, which is inside this box and initially accessed from these stairs we saw earlier. And then they'd wrap around and go up another flight. The original infirmary was upstairs from the chapel here, and this was the only way to get up there. Since uh, men who couldn't walk or needed to be on stretchers. Uh, they were very difficult to get up and down that way, so they built this elevator. So this is one of the cell blocks. At the upper level of it. This view here I think has been used in a number of movies, not just the Shawshank. Wasn't uh, like Runaway Train filmed here in the prison scenes? It looks an awful lot like it. One level down, same thing. Excuse me. other side. Thank you. 
And the same thing, another lever, level lower. What a nasty place, huh? This looks like the wet wall. The walkway named the alley was used by the guards. displayed in this cell are items that would have been used by inmates in the 1950s. Toilets missing in the corner. So all the walls in here are metal, just the paint peeling, several layers of paint. And uh, the wet wall is just there, so all the fixtures just go directly through the wall and um, are accessible from that alley we saw earlier. Yeah, this has got to be, I don't know what other movies were filmed here, but it's got to be a lot. This looks just like quite a few others that I seem to remember watching. Lots and lots of cells. I'm glad it's a cool day. They cautioned me to bring water with me when I called ahead. They said on a hot summer's day it can be stifling in here. There's the uh, observation window into the alley.
spiral staircase down there, presumably for use by the guards. This is the uh, prison library, not the way they showed it in the movie. Library toilet. Legal services. Toilet in that alcove in the corner. Now they say here that you can take photos and videos all you want except for windows where they're specifically prohibited. And that's one of the windows there because the modern Highland Penitentiary is right on the other side of that and they don't want anybody doing surveillance I presume so I was careful to only show that there is a window but not actually look out the window This uh, is the interior view of the hospital. Or the picture is an interior view of the hospital. I'm not sure which angle that's from. This may be distinct from the infirmary that's upstairs at the chapel. These are some more windows we're not allowed to film out of. Let me 
we've got these corner rooms again. Some of them had toilets in them that I saw. Others don't look like they ever had that. So maybe they're just storage. Probably put there just because the styling of the building architecture called for a, a turret type structure at the corners and they had to put something there. Exercise equipment. Bit of rehab here, maybe. Wonder if that's the elevator shaft there. It's just, I guess, a storeroom. And I've got disoriented here, so I'm not sure. But this looks like it could be maybe part of the elevator and it has um, like up and down buttons so this might in fact be upstairs of the chapel. Hmm. Not sure. At different places they mentioned infirmary, and other places they mentioned hospital. This is the uh, inmate shower room. And they use this room in the Shawshank Redemption where Andy Dufresne is accosted by one or more other inmates. And uh, there was no running water at that time, so the Mansfield Fire Department came and parked outside this window. This is another window I'm not supposed to take pictures out of, so I can't get too close to it. but. Um, they ran a fire hose through the window and connected it up here. And uh, that's how they got the showers to work for that scene in the movie. And then they put blocks of dry ice in the drain so when the cold water hit it, it would steam up, make clouds of dry ice, uh, uh, smoke essentially, fake smoke, but it's uh, from the dry ice. And they did that in one scene or one take because nobody wanted to be in here. It was so unpleasant. So this is still the east cell block, and there's the base of that spiral staircase we saw earlier. Oh, 
So this cell block here, which is the actual part inside the bars, is, is what's called the east cell block. It's not the outer stone walls or brick walls. The corresponding west cell block on the other end of the building was a combination of concrete and stone and steel. But this east cell block is entirely made out of steel. And it uh, is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest freestanding uh, steel cell block in the world. Originally, each cell was supposed to have only one man. That was when this was a reformatory. And the prisoners basically just slept in the cells. Otherwise, they were out doing productive things to try to better themselves. But when this became a maximum security prison, then it was two men per cell, and they would spend pretty much all the time during the day except for toilet, shower, and a brief exercise period. So something on the order of 23 hours a day locked in their cells. In the Shawshank Redemption movie, there's a scene where Andy Dufresne is cornered by the inmates calling themselves the sisters and uh, he gets cornered down here and is trying to defend himself with a rake. These doors here are into the, the alley that we saw the, behind the wet walls. Here's another apparently functionless room. It's just there because of the shape of the building. So here's the other side of the east cell block. The lighting is a little better here. All the comforts of home. They've all got that little observation window into the alley. Got the toilet and the sink. And, uh, well, somebody's added a fire suppression nozzle up there, which I'm guessing wasn't there originally. Just to reiterate what I said earlier, unlike the west cell block that's concrete, mortar, steel, brick, this one is entirely of steel. This cell block was completed between the years of 1908 and 1910. It, this cell block is not connected to any outside wall. It is indeed freestanding. It's six levels high, or six tiers high, with two ranges. That's the far side and this side. So there's 50 cells in each range. That's per level. They measure seven feet by nine feet per cell. With two men per cell, it's 1,200 men in this cell block.
<laughs> weird little things like this. really looks like the part in the movie where Andy Dufresne is able to dig a hole out through his wall wouldn't have worked in this cell block because all he would have done is dug a hole through a steel wall with his rock pick which wouldn't have happened if he was in the west cell block then maybe he could have got through the wall but if it has the same design as this one then he would just end up popping out into an open space So this looks like it's putting us into the west cell block now. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. All right. This will make sure you wear your mask all the time so don't shut this place down, okay? Appreciate it. Construction of the west cell block began in 1886 and was completed by 1896. It's five tiers high with 35 cells per range with two ranges per tier for a total of 350 cells holding 700 inmates. The cells are larger on this side. It was considered luxury quarters and housed trustees. Trustees were the inmates who had earned the confidence of the staff and held better jobs. This is the one that, by contrast, is made out of masonry with some steel, like for the, the walkways and bars and things, but you can see it's a much older design. Yeah, not dramatically larger, but a bit larger. The west cell block may have been used in more movies than the east cell block. For example, the Harrison Ford movie Air Force One featured a scene in a Russian prison which used the lowest three tiers of the west cell block here. Any scene in the Shawshank Redemption that featured the cell blocks um, was filmed in a set in a Westinghouse uh, warehouse here in Mansfield. Uh, because they wanted to have cells facing each other and there are no such facing cells here in this uh, prison. Although the style of the cells bore a lot of resemblance to cells here, they, these cells here did not actually appear in the movie because of the fact they weren't facing each other. There are two specially decorated cells on the lower level of this cell block. One of them was used for a music video. And actually, they might have both been, been music videos. I don't recall what they was, what I was told. They said that you can tell because the color is different from the others.
The series exposed to show the heating system. Well, I didn't spot the specially colored cell they mentioned. Okay, we'll go around again. <clears throat> on the whole lower level. I think I'm going to avail myself of the restrooms. This is the so-called bullpen here. This is the uh, solitary confinement wing. Solitary was used within the prison system as a further form of punishment for inmates who did not respond to regular incarceration. Inmates held in solitary confinement were placed in one person's cells, either in total darkness or in constant light for 24 hours a day. Time spent in solitary was dead time and did not count as time served. This area changed over the years along with ideas on appropriate discipline. Looks like that's a shower area. You can see the doors don't have windows except for a little observation and probably feeding port. Normally be kept closed, so it'd be dark in here. <laughs> Picture of the warden. Some of these have these uh, dual level sink comma toilets. <clears throat> these two cells in particular were used in the Shawshank Redemption when they needed to show solitary confinement. They were only used for half the scenes though depending on which angle the camera was aiming. Uh, they had built out in the bullpen just a short distance away matching cells that could be viewed from the other side by the camera. Here they couldn't get rid of the fixtures and that would have been blocking camera positions. So yeah, if you're aiming one way, probably in this direction, then you're uh, using these cells. If you're aiming the other direction, probably it's the one out in the bullpen.
This one also has an alley, although it's dark, to uh, go behind the wet walls. Here's one that seems to be open. These are of a somewhat different design. Okay, we're back out of the solitary wing, re-entering the bullpen. So I want to go back down this end briefly and make sure I'm not missing something at the far end. There's no signage saying what this area is, but it looks like it's probably another shower room. It has the floor drains and the clothes hooks along the wall. Okay, yeah, so that was the only part I missed on the first go around of the west cell block. These little spaces here <clears throat> are under turret type structures on the outside. But they don't appear to be very useful spaces. I've been here for two hours and 15 minutes so far, and it feels like I just arrived. Okay. Back into the bullpen. Did solitary confinement. Tour route exit, there we go. This room was used for incoming and outgoing mail.
for some reason, there's stuff here in Russian. Looks like we're back about where we came in. Exit through the gift shop. snack bar here. Hello. The are in back. Okay, done the tour. West cell block here from the outside. And this would be the uh, east cell block area. And the parking lot. It's pretty full. Popular place today.